Right, the handbrake up, oh, well the handbrake on, uh, the wheels at the back must be chocked. Now to change the brakes, brake uh, pads, you must have replacement pads. So here they are, replacement pads. Then before you jack up the car you must loosen the, the wheel. So I'm going to do that quickly, it's going to pull off this uh, cover. The BMWs there's often a lock nut. <coughs> Store these in a safe place. With lock nut with the lock. Now just loosen the nuts. The bolts, and there we go. One, two, three. Okay, the reason you do that is if you jack up the car, you won't be able to loosen it because the tire will turn. Now it's time to jack the car. Now, be careful, some jacks, you see this, the mouth of this point, uh, um, opening here is too big for this jack point. So if I jack it up, it's going to damage the bodywork and some pipes here. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to put something here to narrow the mouth. So it's a good idea to have a piece of wood or a small brick for this. The reason why this problem comes about is that the mouth has a, um, a recess and these uh, um, lips on the side here are higher and these will damage the, the chassis here. Yeah? So you can put that or you can put a brick. It's just to keep give a flat surface. That's all. Now, important, when you jack a car, make sure the jack is perpendicular to the car. Like so. Right, now we jack it up. Okay, just tighten the jack got to use a trestle this is a trestle as you can see you can adjust the height you must put a trestle under the car before you get under the car okay let's jack it a bit more okay in this case I'm going to use two trestles I have two trestles now, when you uh, use trestles, you've got to make sure that the trestle can handle the weight of the car. So, this car being a little bit heavier than normal, than a small car, I'm going to use two trestles. And you've got to position the trestle in strategic places. If you have a look at the trestle placement, make sure that the trestle is turned in such a way that if a car tries to roll, that the feet of the trestle will not fall over okay and I've put it there uh, on that uh, my, uh, point where the engine is actually well actually the what would you call that that is the the body and then the one at the back is extra at safety so I've got two trestles this one is actually I'm gonna lower the jack a little bit and it's gonna pressurize this trestle and I'm gonna lift that trestle at the back just a bit higher onto that point over there now I'm gonna take off the wheel because the nuts were because the nuts were already uh, uh, loosened it's much easier now one oops Right. Now, while you've got the wheel off, this is a good time to inspect the tire. We're looking for uneven wear, we're looking for nails. We're looking for flat spots. To look for flat spots, you can take a chalk 
and you chalk along here while the wheel is spinning well it's better to actually do it with the wheel on and you will see that the uh, rubber has different heights then you know there's a flat spot okay I'm just visually checking this I'm actually checking more for wear patterns uh, okay now you also check the sidewall okay also look for stones some stones that may have got caught in here uh, that can also make some rattles sidewall all right this tire is fine park the tire bring your chair time to do the brake pads now what I normally do is I separate the I separate the uh, the um, brake assembly by wedging a screwdriver but very important do not scratch or gouge the disc what I want to do is I want to separate the pad assembly the brake assembly pull out the pads and, and then put the new pads in and the reason why you got to do that is because firstly the new pads are much thicker than the old worn pads and because of that uh, you won't be able to slot them in okay there's a clip here just release the clip like that take that out Now what I want to do is I want to separate these two pads uh, before I take it off. Once it's off, it's very hard to get this piston in. So what I'm trying to do is I'm going to compress the, this pad, this assembly, so that this piston over there actually moves in. Now, very important, there is a rubber here. If you pierce this rubber, um, that's a boo-boo. Don't do it. All right, I find the place. I'm going to wedge it. Take this out. I'm going to grip it here and start wedging so that it can release and 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 actually compress that that piston. You'll see the piston compress. I'm just going to put the camera back. get that piston compressed it's already loosened you can already see there we go but now carry on all the way until that piston is right in takes a bit of time see okay it's compressed a bit but you need a lot more than that Try this side there we go because my pads were so worn i couldn't get my screwdriver in here but now i find this place here screwdriver and screwdriver do not damage the disc i am now compressing that piston right in right in Okay, looks like it, yes, it cannot go anymore. Let's just check. Good. Now I have a loose pad here. And on this side, a loose pad. And as you can see, the whole assembly is now loose. So all I have to do now is remove the assembly and swap the pads. Very important, now that I've loosened this whole thing, get some water and clean. Okay, I've got a hose pipe and I'm going to spray with water to get all the brake dust off. If you look on the floor, wow. Really, really dirty. Now, while we're here and we've got the brake pads loosened, 
there's no scratching of these pads on the disc. This is a very good point, a good, a good time to test for a bearing note. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin the hub and I'm going to listen for any grinding. You see, normally when you do this, especially if you've got new pads on, the pads are always tight on the disc, so you'll hear the pads scratching on the disc. It can make it more difficult to hear if it's a bearing or not, if, especially if the bearing is just starting to, to um, get worn out. So let's spin the disc and let's hear the bearing. It's perfectly quiet. Bearing sounds fine okay, too. Okay, now what I'm doing now is I'm pushing this piston even further in now that I've separated it from the disc and I'm pressing on the back of the the uh, pad and I'm pushing the piston even further in right in okay now that piston is now all the way in right here we go totally totally in right uh, hex set or an allen key set you'll need we need to open there's two allen keys here and we need to open them up right. loosen it got to be ready to hold the the assembly you do not want the assembly to be falling on the floor and being held by this brake uh, pipe brake uh, fluid pipe okay so there's the pin and now the other one here we go slide the pin out Top, bottom. Now, what is happening is the clips at the back of the pad are just giving a little bit of a. Uh, let's put the pad back in so that we can get that. The pad is a bit stuck onto the. We can get that out. Okay. There we go, it's coming. Okay, so now we just remove the pads. Oh, these are one. One and two. This is a good opportunity to do some cleaning now. Do not let this uh, brake caliper hang. It will put the full force onto this pipe and it's not made for that. So what you would want is now bring your trestle here. That's why I have this third trestle. It's gonna act as a table. There we go. Now you can do some cleaning. You actually want to get all the excess grease off here. Right, so what that does is these two pins must have must be very clean, must have it mustn't have anything that is in that's sticky or will resist the motion, the movement of the caliper assembly. Make sure there's no bedding on it. Wow, now it's smooth like a baby's bottom. Right, perfect. Clean. Check for any burrs, scratchings. No, it's perfect. Very clean. The thinners will dry quickly. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in and make sure that it moves freely. Ah, oh, perfect. Look at that. There's, it moves. It's still got a suction. 
but there, it's a consistent movement. It's not like there's something sticky in the way and then it, it, it moves, gets stuck, and it's got a consistent resistance. And that's what we want. You check this one. Wow, look at that, look at that. Perfect, nice and clean. Look, even, even here after I've put this in there, look, it's still shining. So those are now clean, ready to go. Now we need the new brake pad. Back and front. So whoopsie. Okay, now this thing may rattle. You need to put some grease on this side. BMW sell this grease. I use a copper compound. And I just put a little bit on the back here. Right, we've got two pins, the longer one is at the bottom and the shorter one is at the top. What I do is I feed them through first, then I put a, just a drop of Loctite, just a drop. And the reason why I feed them first is because I don't want the Loctite to get on the sleeve, and I mean really just a drop now I push them back and I remember the the threaded part is much thinner than the part with the the, uh, the, the, the neck part so the Loctite will not get on the um, the sleeve of this uh, of the rubber here so if you don't if you're not gonna be able to work like that don't use the Loctite because you do not want to put st anything sticky in this tube so this is just what I do but it's not mandatory now I put this back on making sure to align it and now I screw it in here we go one okay and now the other one Okay, first hand tighten each one. Right. Now, you don't tighten to the death here. Um, give it a bit of a tighten. That's sufficient. Remember, we've got the locked out there. Right, and there we go. Remember, that pin is not holding this hub on, so you don't have to tighten like a crazy person. The hub itself, yes, those nuts are very tight, but these pins are not very tight for the reason that 
all the 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 hub is doing is moving up and down uh, the caliper all of the uh, sorry the caliper is just moving up and down along those pins so you don't have to tighten them like crazy now you can see look at that perfect now I'm just uh, moving this grease this copper grease just so it doesn't stick onto the uh, caliper right so that's tightened Now we want to put the little cap on. The cap on the bottom. Now there's an important thing here called the brake sensor, a disc sensor. Now as you can see it only fits on the one side. I I'm going to go do the next side now and you can forward to the point where I mount this sensor. This, What this does is it's a, a sensor to tell you that your brake disc is nearing the death. You see, it's, it's too worn. So that's what this does. So I can't, it only, you only install it on one side of the, the car. So it'll be installed on the other side. I'm just going to clean the, the this uh, clamp here, fit it, and this side is then done. Two, and now, come on, boy. Now we just open this and let it seat. Whoops. There we go. Things at the back <coughs> of the car. I put bricks there so the car cannot roll. Now, jack up the car again. The other side. Before you jack it up, as I showed you before, we quickly loosen the wheel. Now we jack the car. Make sure the wheels can move. There we go. We now put trestles under the car. Before we work on it. support it so it doesn't fall flat like that and scratch the mag. Inspect the tire again as I showed. Sidewalls, good opportunity to see the inner, especially on performance cars you want to see that there's been no rubbing on the inner sidewall and the strut. Park the, the wheel.
as I did on the other side. The point of this is to depress the piston. There's a piston there. Oh yes, and here's this uh, uh, sensor, which we're going to change as well. The sensor. You're going to must have a new uh, sensor, depth sensor, for the brake disc, for the pad, I mean. Okay, so it won't allow any more depression here because it's hitting there, but the, we can still press the the uh, piston in more, which I will do. What do you want to do now? Just make sure. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to turn this a bit more. Okay, what I'm doing is I'm wedging between the back of the pad and the piston. And I'm, up, I'm depressing the piston even further. Okay, you can, uh, once there's space, you can take this. There you go. Pressing the piston right in. There you go. Right in. It's going right in. Okay. Okay, so that piston is now right in. Make sure it is right in though. You've got to actually really get it in. Okay, it's in. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to release this uh, sensor. There's a little... Let's get a picture of that cupboard there. It's a little opening here. It's a little, call it a. See? Open there. And oh. There's the sensor. Take it out. And unplug it. There we go. It's an old sensor. Now we have a loose caliper and what I'm going to do now is open these caps at the back here. There's the one and the top one. It's a little bit stuck this one. And what these caps are for is to stop grease, grime, dust, the dust caps. And you need to open them. Alright, so I've got the two dust caps. Now, if you, I don't know if you remember, on the other side, I only had one. One is missing. Important to get another one. Now, with a size 7, I believe, yeah, Allen key. I'm gonna open here, same way as I did on the other side.
Right, unlock. Not very tight. Also, not very tight. Right, remove it. Remove these pins. One and two. Now, important this caliper will then come off. You don't want to let it hanging on this pipe here. Get yourself your little table, or in my case, I'm using a third chock, I mean, uh, trestle, and unscrew this guy while supporting the caliper and fiddle a bit. And there comes the caliper off. Brakes totally, pads totally worn out. Sensor. Here's the sensor. I suppose you could reuse the sensor. I usually don't. Chuck away the pads. Now this is a good opportunity to do some cleaning. You don't want to put any grease on the disc. Now, some things to know here. Number one, while the caliper is off, it's a good time to spin the disc to hear if there's any bearing problems. So I'm going to spin the disc. Careful you don't catch your finger in the back here. I'm just going to... And I'm going to listen for bearing noises. Because normally, the, when the pads are on, they're scratching and it doesn't spin nicely, and then it it um, kind of it may mask early bearing wearing sound. So let's listen. Is you know give give it a bit of a clean, and you'll see there's a measurement. This measurement here says 28.4. What you do is you measure the thickness of this disc. If it is less than 28.4, you now need a new disc. Uh, another thing is, are there any lips? This disc is completely flat. Sometimes, when, especially when a disc gets worn, it's got little um, ridges, and then you need to go and do something called skimming the disc. What skimming the disc means, it takes a tiny, on a, put the disc on a lathe, and takes a tiny layer off, making it, it completely flat again. There are two lips here where the, the pad has been uh, eating away at the disc. Um, but as long as the mating surface is completely flat and this is still more than 28.4, you're fine. Well, yeah. Well, if it's 28.5 and you're just about to put on new pads, you might consider might consider whether you want to put the new pads on an old disc. But uh, right, so just give it a bit of a clean. I'm using thinners just to clean a bit here. Clean the disc surface. the back Right, now these pins, I'm going to clean them. 
It must be completely smooth, no burrs, as I've said. That is why you don't just drop them on the floor, you don't want them scratched. Let's feel. Good, good, very good. Now we need to get the pads on. Okay, now important. You, as you can see, I've rotated this thing. Be aware of which way you are rotating this. You don't want to wind this thing up. You've got to remember the way it was. You don't want it uh, wound up. And seat the pad. There we go. Make sure these rubbers are free of dirt and grease. Yes, they are. Just want to make sure I haven't wound this pipe up. Let's check it out. Yeah, that's it. Now, just put a bit of copper grease on the back of this one pad. High temperature. Oh yes, now I'm going to put these pins in now. Now as I showed on the other side, I put a tiny bit of Loctite, um, thicker, I mean longer pin at the bottom. But remember, this is, this is not mandatory because you don't want to get Loctite in the tube here. Because then it will make it sticky when the, the caliper has to traver move. And you just, just a tiny bit, I mean I'm even going to give the, 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 the residue on the other the other um, threads, that was like half a drop. People overdo it with Loctite, half a drop is enough. And just by the way, this is the blue Loctite. It's, uh, it's more like of a glue. It's not, it's not gonna uh, lock the nut that you can't open it. It's just going to, maybe not a glue, maybe more like, it's more like a gel, just so that with the vibration and that, it won't come loose. There we go. Now push these pins in. Okay, very important. Don't forget to put the sensor, the brand new sensor on. At this point, here's the sensor. There's a space for it. Oopsie. There we go. The sensor is now seated. You can thread the sensor here by the brake bleeding nipple around the back. There is a recess here for this clip. There we go. There's a recess here for this clip. I'm not going to close the brake bleeding one because I'm still going to bleed the brake fluid and let me just join it to the the one at the top seal the door make sure not to yeah, make sure that the yeah the wires are not being eaten yeah there we go and you seal the door I need two hands The caliper. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have uh, done the sensor first because now this Loctite I forgot will dry, but we've got a few minutes, right? Let's just screw that in. Here we go. And now 
the bottom one. Okay. And remove this spare trestle. tight yet. Make sure the other one is also in position. Okay, now we can tighten. Not too tight. There we go. Tight enough. And this one. Let's go. Remember, there is lock tight there. You don't have to go crazy. put the cover back on here, this clip, let's give it a bit of a clean, Almost in position, you just gotta press it. There we go. Make sure these are in. Yes, one, two. Okay. This is in position. Yes, yes, yes. All done. So that brings me to the end of okay, you would normally close this. So that brings me to the end of how to change your brake pads. Um, I can quickly show you how to measure this disc. I'll quickly measure it and demonstrate. Right. Okay, you need a vernier. Vernier. Switch it on. Zero it. You can set it to uh, moles or inches. And now what you do. measure the disc thickness but remember these lips here so you've got to measure it okay it is 28.7 so this disc is still fine and the last thing is you put these covers these caps on the dust caps one Now some notes. Once you've put on new pads, for the first hundred kilometers you should do gentle braking. The pads must mate with the uh, disc, especially considering this is not a brand new disc but it is flat. The best way to wear in pads is to do general, uh, gen uh, gentle braking, um, no emergency stops. Let the pads wear in uh, the first half mil. So the first 100 k's gradual braking you'll find that it might not have the best grip for a little while once the pads have started to to mate nicely with this uh, disc and it's also clean the, the 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 layer off of dirt here um, it will progressively get better and better so don't smack the brakes immediately it won't feel amazing for the first 100 k's and that's why you gradually uh, hit the brakes okay when you put the wheel back on and put the nuts in, you tighten one nut, you, tight, you, you, you partially tighten them all, then you, you tighten them one, then opposite, 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 to about 80% tighten. Then it will seat the, the, the mag nicely, then you go to about 90% tighten. One, 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 one. Then you go for full tightening. 
one, 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 one. You see, so we always tighten opposite like that. It's not like a gasket where you tighten so on. This one you want to seat it so it sits directly in the middle. Okay, so that brings me to the end of the how to change your pads. Thanks for watching. Right, the next step is to reset the service. I'm going to press and hold this button here. There we go. Now press it, brake fluid, press and hold. Okay, next thing is front brakes. Right, done. Now switch off and start car. Thank you.